Aislam Alek. Aoudu Billahi Menene Shaitan Nirajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Brothers and sisters, and the let me know it. I greet you with the greetings of peace once again of Aislam Alek. And I thank Allah as always for this opportunity. And I pray for Allah's forgiveness and, and his help at the same time that he will help navigate me through this Juma Khutbah. Because when we say Allah, I thought today I would just briefly explain a little bit about it so that the general audience know who we are talking about. Because when we say Allah, we're not speaking of an Arab man or Arab woman or a man or a woman, period, or no object. And for the audience that in their worship, they have a concept of who is Almighty God. Well, I just want to share with you today, during this football, how in our Islamic study of the scripture and uh, how the word Allah is described to us that both in the Quran and throughout the Islamic uh, uh, structure in our worship. And it includes more than just prayer. When we say worship, we say ibadah, which involves not only the prayer, but the things that is formulated in our thoughts and mind in our character of our behavior that supports the worship that we profess, that we believe in. So I'll give you some of the information we got early in learning about Al-Islam. And I would like to reference where I got this information from, this form of information as I study, because I really thank Allah for the leaders and teachers, sincere leaders and teachers that try to help us and point us to the way of Allah and not to the way of themselves. They reference first and foremost the Quran, the book that we as Muslim profess to believe in when we come into the knowledge of our religion properly. And in that, Allah says in the Quran, with him, and the word him <coughs> is just used to give a description of authority, not in the sense of ultimate authority, because in the Arabic is hua that has no gender attached to it. With him are the keys of the unseen. Now listen carefully, because when I say I would describe him as not male or female, then your mind automatically wonder, well, what I'm going to say. And if we, since Allah will bless us to understand more, because it's with Allah is the key to understand because you know key's purpose is to unlock locks and a lock is something that keep you out and the thing that keep us out of understanding the realities that are around us is ignorance and the lack of knowledge and we all go through it because not one of us can claim that we know things or know everything so it goes on to say and uh, in this book, in the Quran, where Allah is the keys to the unseen and also the treasures that none knows but He, 
He knows whatever there is on earth and in the sea. And not a leaf falls, but with his knowledge. Allah's knowledge is without limit. Everything happens between the deepest abyss on earth and the highest heaven is known to him. I'll stop, because we have scientists today. Some meteorologists, some anthropologists, some uh, might be archaeologists and uh, astronomers, and they're still coming up with what they even declare as discoveries. Discoveries mean scientifically in the language or the jargon of those who search out into the heavens for what's there mean that they didn't know first. Then they come across new discoveries. Like in the ocean, they come up with new life forms because no one had explored certain depths of the ocean to come up with that. But in the Quran, there's no limitation to Allah's knowledge because we also declare, as you declare in your religion, that Almighty God, Allah created everything. And so if you created everything, then that's a hint that you must know all that you created. And it goes on to say this. The smallest atom in the universe is known to him. He knows all that is open and secret, all thoughts, and every contrivance of the devil. His knowledge of all of that. Allah's knowledge is eternal and perfect. Sometimes we as human beings come up with something and we have to place it in forms of theory. And so we don't know. That's a sign that we don't know. But in this book, The Last Revelation, Allah declared that is nothing that he does not know. Nothing comes into power without our order, our permission, without the permission and will of Allah. Everything, whether small or great, good or evil, beneficial or harmful, true or false, knows or uh, uh, the known or the unknown to us. Sinful or virtuous occurred only by his lead. Whatever Allah wills comes into being. And what he does not will cannot exist. No man may follow Allah's command or any of his command without his permission. Think about that. Nor may any man escape Allah's will. So to give you an idea of the power of Allah, you know, the fear that we have for each other and what we may do may be rightly justified given our limitation of understanding of the power of Allah. But if Allah will is for certain dangers not to befall you, they won't, no matter who comes against you. And for us, Living in this day of COVID-19, here it is 2021 now, no one knew that it would have such an impact on our life, Allah knew. And he knows when it's going to end. And he knows the position we will take and our different efforts to strive to do something that is helpful for humanity. And I'm not just speaking big. I'm talking about individual health 
right now that we need. That help when you see someone without food, clothes, and shelter. To lend a hand if you have the wherewithal. That help that you need when you know that you might need things to help maintain and sustain a given culture, a given community that is trying to do right. See, we may hide our decision and our passions to do things, but remember this, in the attributes of Allah, ain't nothing hidden. He knows what manifests to us before it's even manifest. And he knows when we are coming to it. So briefly, I just wanted to introduce you to the concept of the almighty God that Muslims worship and Christians with understanding as well as Muslims with understanding of us and understand because there is no limitation to the power of the creator that we profess we believe in and the power no one can resent Allah's power. If he declare for a thing to be or to come into being, it's um by a pum in Arabic be, and it is. And this is nothing new because in earlier scripture, in the scripture books before the written book of the Quran, it was showing that Allah had the power and only a few believed. But those believers were successful. They may have went through toil and struggle like many of us may be going through right now. But because of them keeping the faith and trying to do right, Allah blessed those efforts. So let us pray for each other to have an increase in faith. Because I heard it from a great leader, real personal, in a prayer that he and I and our uh, uh, local email, may Allah be pleased with both of them, before they return to Allah, was saying, O oh Allah, and bless the brother with an increase in faith. Now, some would say, oh, he knew. Well, no, Allah knew. And Allah will put it on your heart and mind when he wants to, to express it so that that would be a gift to you to strive to improve your faith. And in so doing, one of the keys to improving the faith is studying the word of Allah, which is Al-Quran. And I'm going to end with that part. As I came before you, I greet you. I salam alaykum. Once again, I greet you, I salam alaykum. And I seek protection in Allah from the accursed devil, from the envier one as he envies and practices envy, and from the hardship or the disguise that may lurk in my own being, that might make me want to think that I'm more self righteous. That's Satan, the Satan, Satan, because no one can declare the greatness without understanding that it's only through the permission of Allah that he blesses us. And as we study the Quran, we are learned that we all on equal terms when it comes to obeying Allah. Sure, you may be a scientist, teacher, uh, imam, or ulima, or whatever our station in life. We just told you in the first part, as it says in the Quran, nothing comes into being without Allah's permission. We may think that we came about great knowledge by ourselves, but if it wasn't for the nature that Allah put out into his creation, we wouldn't come about anything. And then on top of that, 
if it wasn't for the nature that Allah puts in us, He gives us a type of light, as we discussed before, on glory, a type of light that fire scarce touches. Think about it. Now, that has given us an insight, inshallah, to see that there are greater lights than just our physical light we use to illuminate our physical world. There is a light within that light that Allah teaches us understanding of what we see and then gives us the strength, the courage, and determination to appreciate that light. And then in appreciation, we give out expression. One expression is, Alhamdulillah, Irabdil Alameen. And brothers and sisters, I know it's so important that we can go on. But I'm going to stop here. To give thanks to Allah. Because it is Allah who guides our heart and mind to greater height and, and different length of reason and in the Quran to give us an understanding so that when you go back and read it for yourself and there's so many verses in the Quran that show that it's not like unto Allah. In this chapter it speaks of groups of people as you discuss things. Different minds coming together helps you to broaden the concept well, in the Quran, on the surah that deals with groups, and I, I'm just giving you the name of a particular chapter. The chapter is 39, chapter 39 in the Quran, and it speaks of groups as as summa, as summa. And forgive my little uh, mispronunciation, a little bit of the Arabic, but let us pray for the understanding that Allah has put before us. It says in the Quran, No just estimate have they made of Allah, such as due to Him on the day of judgment, the whole of the earth will be but his handful, and the heavens will be rolled up in his right hand. So glory to him. High is he above the partners they attribute to him. So no matter what we say in our attributes, giving a tribute to Allah, he's far greater than that. Those are human aspiration that gives us an example of what to aspire for. But we never can be Allah. There's Allah and Allah alone. It's in the Quran. Because at best we can only be servants of the one that's most high. So brothers and sisters, let us take serious of our worship to Allah. Call out to him in prayer often for increase in understanding. Assalamu alaikum.